going to take a look at my homemade spool gun. Uh, a while back I wanted to weld with some aluminum, do some aluminum welding, and I wanted to use my MIG welder and I started looking into the price of spool guns and they're like four or five hundred bucks and I didn't want to pay that so I tried to figure out and uh, was successful at figuring out how to make one uh, for under a hundred bucks so I did that and I wanted to show that to everybody. I've had a few questions about it and uh, so we'll go through it here real quick. First things first, I bought a uh, just a steel wire MIG gun off eBay. So this is like a self-contained unit. I think you hook it up to a 12 volt source or something along those lines. I can't remember the actual intention. But it comes with basically just this lead right... <sighs> Come on. Just this lead right here. That's that's what's hanging off the back of it. So, uh, you know, that, that connects to something. And... Uh, Anyway, you get the gun. The important part here is the drive rollers inside. It actually has a pretty nice set of drive rollers, and that is the most expensive thing if you're going to try and build a spool gun is buying that little unit with the motor and all that kind of stuff, and this one came with it. So what, what was difficult about this gun is, you know, if you hook it to a battery, you just kind of hit the trigger, and it squirts stuff out. There's really no control over the speed or anything like that. It's just kind of, I think people use these in emergency repairs and stuff like that where you need to take it out on a truck and you just squirt the wire out and hope it sticks, you know. Well, what I did to modify this is I drilled a hole and tapped it in our torch end here. And you can see this is just a normal torch end. It has the holes for the gas. It just uh, you know, didn't have any appropriations for it. So I drilled and tapped a hole there and I just used an old MIG tip and drilled it out and uh, fitted it up in there and then got some plastic tubing from the hardware store and so I kind of taped the uh, wiring from the gun together with the plastic tubing then you can see there's four red wires and those are just wired into the switch here I think you can see them through the holes so they're just wired into the switch so when the switch goes on it just closes these are just switch legs. It just closes the circuit and says, hey, this is activated. So then these take over. And uh, at the end, <coughs> over here, I've got on my hose a little barbed end. And I'll show you where that goes. And then I've got this four-pin connector, which is just like the ones that uh, Miller uses. Because I thought they looked nice and operated nice. You know, they kind of go in and then thread on. So uh, they're actually really nice. So what happens is I can take this piece and uh, I can shove my lead through here or uh, you can go in through the side however you want to do it but this just hooks directly to uh, your lead connectors in there so that's not a problem then we have our four pin that hooks right here on the face and it is uh, set up so that you can only put it in one hole there so yeah so that's awfully nice like that and uh, so what this does is, when I click the switch, um, this, this tells the uh, drive motor circuit that the switch has been flipped. And it also, there, so that's, that's two of the wires. The other two wires are for the solenoid. And I have a remote solenoid up here for the gas. So what happens is, you pull the switch, and there's a rheostat here, right, that controls the wire speed. And what it does is it controls the voltage to this motor. Well, I've got a double throw switch up here. So this is onboard gun, which makes this one run, and this drive motor run. And then there's outboard, which makes this drive roller run and that solenoid run, okay? And this controls the voltage going to the drive motor here. So that's pretty sweet then this controls the amperage or voltage I'm sorry voltage going to the actual MIG wire so I have control now of the voltage going to the MIG wire I have control of the speed of the wire on the gun which is really sweet which you don't see you know this gun here doesn't come like that and then uh, you can see in here I had to kind of cut apart the wires and butch them up a little bit but basically what I did was cut the wires to the drive motor and then I ran them through the switch so that either 
the rheostat is feeding this set of wires going to this motor or it's feeding this set of wires going to the other motor and then same with the solenoids you know just ha kinda had to cut them and splice them in so that one set of solenoid wires is on this side ones on that side so uh, it actually works pretty sweet so then I have <coughs> pardon me another jumper here you can see this one's only two pins out of the four and uh, this guy's only wired for two pins so he goes in here like that Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. <laughs> Sorry for the shaky cam. Then I have this little guy up here, which has got the other two pins. So, uh, you know, these actually kind of sit like so. And uh, hang on, guys. There we go. So he's on there. So now this is my gas solenoid. These are about 20 bucks. I think I paid about 30 or 40 bucks for that gun. And uh, I just wired up a little plastic tube right there and if you remember right uh, this little gas tube has a barb on the end of it so uh, he goes through this little hole here and then that tube connects on the other end and then I've got a little cover that I made uh, for the whole unit there uh, but we won't put that on right now then it just goes out to a standard uh, gas regulator there, and away we go. So you got to hook up an argon bottle to this. That's the most expensive piece of the whole mess. And uh, once you do that, you've got, you know, I flip my switch, I'm outboard. Now I'm using my spool gun, and uh, flip my switch, and I'm inboard. Everything's good. So uh, let's see how it works. So I'll show you real quick. And I'm sorry, I lost my wing nut here that puts tension. Uh, on the rollers so I gotta kinda hold it but you know we're all wired up here and then if we uh, turn this up there we go turn it all the way up there then we'll turn it all the way down you can see we've got control and we're not dealing with that down there then if we flip our switch here it'll this will still operate the machine which is kinda cool uh, but now I'm feeding my uh, normal MIG wire through uh, through my other gun see it rolling there so that shows you how the two are kinda done up then uh, you know I think we can hear the solenoids if I do like this Hang on. You can tell uh, that we're doing the gas through there. I don't know if you can catch that on camera. But anyway, yeah, that's how I did my, uh, my homebrew spool gun right there, under 100 bucks.